question is, how do we understand the claim that Jesus, peace be upon him, was crucified on a cross, tree, or pole in light of Deuteronomy chapter 21, verses 22 and 23, and Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, which states that whoever is hung on a tree or pole or cross is cursed? Well, uh, I'd say you're about that close to understanding the gospel, right? Because we know, uh, we know Jesus is, is righteous according to both the Bible and the Quran. Muhammad in the Hadith said that Satan touches everyone who comes into the world, but he couldn't touch Jesus or his mother. Everyone else, Muhammad, everyone, Satan could touch him, but not Jesus. And so, you're right. How do, how do we reconcile our belief that Jesus was righteous with the Old Testament claim that anyone who's hung on a tree is cursed, and it seems that we would have to say that Jesus was cursed in spite of being righteous, and that's exactly what the, what the gospel says, right? The one who was without sin became sin for us. So, um, yeah, if, if, you, if, you, if, we, if we left those things out, and you would wonder, oh, was, was Jesus cursed? Well, Jesus was righteous, and yet he was cursed. Um, and notice, he was hung on a tree, according to Shabir as well. So he's under a curse, according to both views on, on the stage tonight. And so if Jesus was under a curse, well, what do we do there in, in Christianity? He's under a curse for a reason, right? He's under a curse for a reason, because he's becoming a curse for us, right? Uh, so that we can be forgiven. Um, as far as uh, other interpretations, I, I guess he's, a, he's under a curse because he was hung on a tree, but I, I don't know. Uh, Shabir's about to answer, so he can explain what, what he would uh, think about Jesus being hung uh, on a tree. I agree that Jesus was righteous, and uh, I don't agree that he was a curse. Um, and the Deuteronomy passage actually refers to a person who was hung justly for his crimes. So he's under the curse of God, according to Deuteronomy. Paul misunderstood this, and though Jesus was unjustly hung, uh, Paul said uh, Jesus became a curse, but, but he's a curse for us. But that is problematic, because as Dr. William Lane Craig uh, asserts, you cannot just simply say that Jesus got up and, and rose from the dead on his own. God had to raise him from the dead. But as I pointed out to him, for God to raise him from the dead, God has to want to raise him from the dead. And if all we know is that he died under the curse of God, according to your scriptures, you have no reason for thinking that God would want to raise the accursed person from the dead who died under the curse of his own law. Uh, so you have a contradiction here, and it's a major one, and that's another reason for believing that uh, Jesus was not raised from the dead, and it's better to think that he did not die in the first place. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem. Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha Ha Kwadash, and double honors to the elder apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Also, I want to give a sincere shalom to you other brethren, you followers of the truth. And uh, mainly, let me say shalom to the elect. Anyway, I want to go across, come across, you know, go into this video I came across and really shows that Christians don't, do, does not have the answers. So these debates. Uh, this guy, David Woods, he's debating about, uh, well, it goes into, as you saw in Deuteronomy 21st chapter, which they say that who people call, ignorantly calls Jesus, said if a man, uh, Deuteronomy 21 and 22, it says if a man has committed a sin worthy of death and he is executed, right? If a man committed a sin which is worthy of death, he is executed. And you hang his body on a tree, you must not leave his body on a tree overnight, which they did to us. We know who did that. But you must also, you must be sure to bury him that day because anyone who is hung on a tree is under God's curse. So now this is the argument that they were going into. Is Jesus, Yahweh, let me say that, is he accursed, right? Which we would technically say, no, he was, as Yahweh not of cur accursed, but he had to take on the punishment or the judgment of who he was before time. As I'll get into the book of John, the ninth chapter, where it was going into, did he sin, this blind man sin? 
right? And then this Muslim, you know, which the Muslim was, you know, he was debating these Muslims and they was uh, tearing them up. But, you know, those kind of questions aren't, aren't meant for people who are really truly trying to understand. Those kind of questions are for people who want to try to trap you up with the scriptures. So you must know the answers. So the Muslim said, since he was accursed, why would God raise an accursed person from the dead? Which the one you call Yahawashi wasn't some average Jake. You know, this is the son of the Most High. But we're going to go into that as well because that's real easy, you know. But if you don't believe in reincarnation, then you're screwed, you know. And this is why the Christians are getting more and more tripped up. And that video have a half a million views showing David Wood getting chopped up, okay. Just behind that question, they said that ended David Wood's uh, career. So we're going to go a little bit further. Um, into Second Samuel. Um, this is titled "God's Covenant with David." Second Samuel seven, and looks like thirteen and twelve. And when thy days be fulfilled, and the you can read the whole chapter. I'm just getting to the point. And when thy days be fulfilled, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers. I will set up thy seed. Speaking about David. Um, I will set up thy seed, right? And this goes into the uh, it goes into a vision uh, that Nathan spoke, right? It said, "I will set up thy seed after thee." Who was the seed? Solomon, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish my establish, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever right so the most high is not one that shall lie but it goes on to say I will be his father right and he shall be my son if he commit iniquity right so this is proves that this was the Solomon was the son of the most high he said he shall be he shall build a house for my name and I will establish the throne uh, of his kingdom forever. I will be his father and he shall be my son. But if he commits iniquity, I will chastise in him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. Well, you keep reading. You can go in the book of Kings. I'll try to get there in a second. That never happened. But my mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. So he's saying his mercy was never done away from him. And thy house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. Right? So this rules out. Let's say this is not Yahweh. Let's say this is just a King Solomon, a man of the Most High. He's saying he's establishing a, a throne with him forever. Right? According to all these words, according to the vision, so did Nathan speak, there we go, unto David. Right? So, this is a clear indication. The Most High called him his son. Right? We're going to get a little bit more in that. Um, let me go to Kings, like I said I was going to. God's uh, this is titled God's anger against Solomon and the Lord said was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel which had appeared unto him twice and had commanded him concerning this thing that he should not go after other gods but he he kept not that which the Lord commanded wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon for as much as this is done of thee and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statu statues, which I commanded thee, I will surely rend a kingdom from thee and will give it to thy servant. Notwithstanding in the days will uh, I will not do it for David, thy father's sake, but I will rend it under out of the hand of thy son. Right? How, how, be, I, how be it, I will not rend away all the kingdom, 
but will give one tribe to the son of David, right? One tribe to thy son for David, right? To the, why is he saying it like that? But will give one tribe to thy son for David, my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have, have chosen. So the Most High is a perfect power. On a, on a, he controls the right hand, the perfect balance. So to understand what happened is um, all the things that happened to David was for a reason. When he went off, right, to establish Solomon. And Solomon went off. So if you can imagine you have loved ones, family members, you see it getting beat up, getting punched and kicked. And you jump in to defend them and you take the punishment for them so they can live just so later you can come back and get your enemy or them that did it to them. Okay, and this is the same thing. The Most High sent his son for the sacrifice of the children of Israel for all those things. But he's not just going to uh, uh, sacrifice his son on a tree without something that had to been done. Right? Because that's the balance. He causes it to happen so he can come and do what needs to be done, right? This is why all of us carry on situations from our lives and our past lives that have caused us trouble only to make us better, right? This is what, this is what the resurrection is all about, you know, being renewed, being reborn. But see, David Wood couldn't answer all those questions, man. He, was, he hit a brick wall. And that reincarnation thing hits the brick wall. Let's get another example. John, the ninth chapter. John 9 and 1. Um, well, first let's go. I'm going to go to John, but first let's go to Matthew real quick. I'm going to go to Matthew um, 1. Um, there's many scriptures. Uh, Matthew 24. Uh, even Yahweh said, I'm the root, the one you call Jesus. He said, I'm the root and the offspring of David. Right? So, um, this is clear that he was not immaculately accepted, but the, the, uh, David Wood and those Christians believe, you can look it up, that the Holy Spirit is a, a special man that came down and had sex with Mary while she was with Joseph. That That's crazy. But the Lord would do, you know, why would the Lord do that? Okay. With his own son committing an abomination and having his son basically as a, a form of a mamza <laughs> out of adultery this is crazy you know but this is what they teach okay this is Matthew 1 and 1 the book of the generations of Jesus Christ the son of David okay so who's the son of David King Solomon the son of Abraham who's the son of uh, Abraham Isaac and what did Isaac also do blessed Esau with the sword so the very sword he blessed him with they killed him with right which is a form of a curse as a, a blessing Isaac with that sword so they came back and this is all done for the demise of Esau see it's it's about building up something goodly and beautiful all to come out with revenge best served cold and in this case revenge is going to be best served hot right so there's many things that Yahabashah the one you call Jesus have done in the past lives right clearly you know the most high is a just power and a feared king of all the earth clearly he's not just going to send his son to be which he could have but he, do, he does everything in perfect order and balance. To send his son to die on the tree. Well, what happened to the Israelites? What happened to us? Some of us got away in the past. But all through, I'm talking about many years ago. I guess all of us got troubled. But some didn't get as harsh as others. But, you know, in, in lives, when you're reborn, you carry on different curses. And you can't understand why. Let's go to John 9 and 1. Let's go to John... Uh, 9 and 1 I'll try to make this quick um, and 
And as Jesus passed, Yahabashah passed by, by and saw a man which was blind from his birth. Why is this even relevant? But we'll get it. And, the, and his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? See, now, if you're a Christian, and they didn't, he didn't ask this question and then say that he was born blind. Then you can have an argument. Okay, what did he say? Did somebody poke his eyes out? Did some, Did his parents do something that caused him to do that? I don't know. This is why when you go into the Apocrypha, they said in the Apocrypha that one of the scriptures says that he was talking about worshiping the dead, um, speaking to the dead or whatever. All those was prayers that the Most High will have mercy on you for coming back. This is the this is putting the keys in the place of reincarnation. Okay, I know there's the Christians they go into. I think it's in Maccabees. I can't remember what book. I don't think it's Maccabees. One of those books where they said it it disproves because God is not for um, praying for the dead or something something matter like that. Um, but it was original book. These people agree with having it taken out. But there's ver various verses in the Old Testament where a man sacrificed his own son by fire. I mean, his own daughter, Salakia. You know? Because to win, so to speak. So you have things like that in there. It's only witchcraft when you do it to, uh, to other gods. Okay? Anyway, but anyway, it says, and, G and his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? So this is speaking of something before he even came on the earth. Jesus answered, Yahweh answered, neither have this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of Yahweh should be made manifest in him. So they were speaking of reincarnation. So he was born for blind for what particular reason? I must work the works of him that sent me while I sent in this day. So when he said this man didn't sin, he didn't sin in that life, right? This is clear. He just, this man wasn't just born blind, just to be born blind. You know, the Lord do that if he wants. But it's always a repercussion to why things happen. Okay? That's the point. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I just wanted to touch on that um, about the reincarnation because, you know, you have Christians will say, well, the Israelites didn't exist before Jacob or whatever, right? So they did exist. They were just called by another name. They're called the Israelites came with an, uh, a, basically as the Israelites, Right? He is the prince of power, Yasharala. So anyway, we lost our heritage and we woke back up. That's what it is. And we lost our heritage again and we're waking back up. 